Hi everybody. Um, so today uh, is uh, Tuesday, the beginning of the week, uh, starting in on on July the twenty second. So for this week, we have an individual assignment uh, to be completed by one p.m. on Friday, and that's a commentary. Uh, to be posted on module 3. Um, both teams already did this. They posted the team members information on uh, module 1, on the module 1 discussion board. And uh, congratulations, the teams did exactly what I asked. Uh, the team membership was what I asked. So, very good. Thank you very much. This this is a very good start for this course. I can tell this is a good class. It's important to follow instructions because uh, in in any business you have to bid for contracts with uh, other companies or with the uh, biggest buyer of uh, products and services uh, in the world. That's the federal uh, government of the United States. And usually the instructions are provided in detail and you have to follow them. So if you know how to follow instructions, uh, you tend to do better in business and that's what uh, this class is doing. So very good job. Also all posted their uh, commentary in module 2 on time with the exception of one person that posted late but that person was excused to post late so everybody posted as uh, they should have posted so continue with the good work so this week we have a commentary uh, by 1 p.m. on Friday we have the two team leaders defined Juan Martinez and Sian Kumar uh, so let me let me just make sure I get this right. Yeah, so we have Juan Martinez and uh, Siam Kumar. So these are the, Juan Martinez and Siam Kumar. They are basically the bosses for the teams. Uh, and for the teams to do well, you cannot have, you should avoid conflict and you should avoid as an individual being a free rider. In the past, most of the conflicts that I've seen in teams, they were due to free riders. Folks who don't do as much work as others and just take a, try to take advantage of the work that others do. So, as I said before, the team leaders are not responsible for uh, chasing after free riders who are not pulling their weight. Uh, it's everybody's obligation, all team members' obligation, to always make sure that they are doing as much as the other team members. The team leaders will be doing more work than uh, anybody because they will have to coordinate the work of others and they are going to be the ones putting together the reports at the end and submitting the reports and the, um, the, the, the Excel files at the end of the course. So, uh, and this is why typically in this course the team leaders get an A uh, unless the projects are too badly done uh, but I don't I don't think that this is going to be the case with this course so what, what I envision happening is that uh, as the course progresses we're gonna have some uh, submissions of uh, uh, commentaries uh, coming in late or not coming in at all and that may bring uh, individual grades down um, in the end uh, in, the, in the reports, uh, each individual member's contributions will be scored, and uh, I, I expect absolute honesty there. 
I've had in the past uh, dishonest uh, 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 reporting and that ended up hurting the teams. For example, I've had uh, in the past uh, team leaders scoring everybody the same and then scoring themselves lower and just to be nice to everybody and uh, sort of like a, a, a trick try to to play games and then I did some I made some phone calls and I just realized that that was uh, a game that they were playing and uh, I ended up in those cases uh, uh, lowering the grades for everybody uh, because of dishonesty so typically I'd expect some variation in the in the scores for uh, the contributions uh, uh, given by uh, different uh, team members that are consistent with what they've done. Uh, so that's something that uh, to keep in mind as the as the uh, you move forward in your projects. Okay. So I was in the previous uh, video. I was talking about um, how to get information about companies. Siam Kumar, I believe, uh, mentioned that he works for Comerica. So I mentioned that you can get information about companies from uh, Yahoo Finance, from um, uh, the SEC Edgar uh, database. But you can get from other sources as well, YouTube videos uh, that are created by the companies, uh, YouTube videos with commentary by the companies uh, of customers uh, on the companies. Uh, you know, doing Google searches, uh, you get uh, people commenting on the companies, uh, employees commenting on the companies. Uh, Wikipedia articles on the companies also can give you an idea about how the companies uh, uh, are, what are the issues that they are dealing with at the moment. And if you're going to do a data analysis for a company, knowing as much about the company as possible is extremely important um, and, and gives a good impression about the companies. Even, even factoids, uh, even things that are not uh, known to the general public. And one of the best places to find out about uh, those things are the um, earnings reports. So let's say, for example, you wanted to know more about uh, Walmart. Typically, you are going to do a search like this Walmart earnings call transcript and that's uh, a document where that summarizes uh, the questions and answers uh, that the company uh, executives provided to uh, 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 analysts and that's where you get a lot of the interesting uh, goings on about um, the companies. So I did this and then I clicked on this one maintained by Motley Fool. Unfortunately these uh, earnings call uh, transcripts you have to do some searching to get them. Uh, they are not as easy to find as the King 10 Qs uh, that I mentioned in, my, in one of my previous slides. Uh, from the SEC uh, Edgar. So you have to do some searching. So I, if I click here on, uh, on uh, the Motley Fool, they keep some of these uh, transcripts. And then typically it's toward the end of the transcripts where you get the questions and answers from the analysts. That's where you get the, the, the more interesting stuff. So in this particular case, it starts around here. So let me see questions and answers. 
So that's where you have the analysts. So for example, Kate Machine from uh, Goldman Sachs asking questions and then the folks from Walmart answering. And then you have an, uh, another analyst like Simeon from Morgan Stanley asking questions and then answers from uh, Walmart. Doug McMillan, uh, McMillan is the CEO of Walmart. So you see the voice of the CEO and the chief executives. And uh, they talk about things that are the most important things for the company at the moment. So this is where you find a lot of information about uh, the company. And as I said, uh, in, you can get a lot of interesting information, even from Yahoo Finance. So if I recall it properly, Sam Kumar works for Comerica. And Comerica is, um, seems to be a regional bank, right? So Comerica Incorporated is the parent of Comerica Bank, which is a regional commercial bank. So I assume that the, uh, the data here for CMA, Comerica Incorporated, reflects to a large extent the bank operations. And, uh, and you see that the profit margin here, this is net profit margin, is quite, uh, quite nice. Uh, so this is a company that is doing quite well. For regional banks, usually this matter, this uh, measure, return on assets, is the one that is used to compare one regional bank with another. So if we're look, since we're looking at Comerica, the holding company, uh, maybe that doesn't is not a reflection of the bank alone. But uh, one interesting factoid is that our bank here, the International Bank of Commerce in uh, in Laredo, has one of the largest profit margins and return on assets in the world. It's uh, quite remarkable. Uh, in fact, uh, if any bank wants to, a, a regional bank, right, regional banks, um, they usually make loans to small businesses and uh, uh, to individuals in the form of mortgages. And also they get uh, uh, deposits from uh, individual uh, depositors which then use checking accounts and savings accounts. So that's what regional banks do, different from uh, investment banks like Morgan Stanley, JP Morgan, etc., which uh, do other things. Uh, so this is a very high return on assets almost no bank in the world has as high a return on assets as uh, IBC. So it would be interesting if you, if you want to know uh, what a successful regional bank does, it makes sense to study IBC. See, one of the uh, most um, uh, prestigious regional banks in the United States is U.S. Bank Corp, USB. And so they are like the, the gold standard. And when you look at their return on assets, it's way lower than IBC. And the return on assets is related to the profit margin. So it's a return on assets that's a bit higher than Comerica's, but way lower than IBC. Interestingly, there seems to be a bank in Argentina that has a better return on assets than, I, than IBC, and that's this Grupo Financiero Galicia. And uh, yeah, their return on assets is 6%, over 6%. So this is the one that I think is the highest in the world. But as you can see, the profitability is nowhere near IBCs. So 
these numbers are not comparable. Uh, this may be due to the fact that uh, uh, Argentina now has a very high inflation and that may allow the, the banks to get a better return on assets but their profit margin overall is not nearly IBC's profit margin. So it's a bank in Argentina is not really comparable to a bank in the United States. Now this profit margin for a bank is unheard of, is unbelievable. It's uh, very, very high. Um, so uh, Matt, the main message here is you need to understand uh, the businesses that you are analyzing data for uh, uh, very well in order to provide uh, good insights to them based on their data analysis. Moreover, not to be a, a free rider you really have to read the textbook if you have not read the textbook before uh, carefully and go through these uh, YouTube videos and maybe do one or two of the analysis done in the videos using the data sets uh, that are here. If you don't do that you're going to end up being uh, less knowledgeable about what needs to be done than the other students. So as the course progresses, I'll be talking more about uh, the, the project, uh, but looking at the, the, the report template. Uh, this is it for today. Congratulations on doing a very good job uh, for modules one and two. You've done what was asked, and that is uh, uh, very good. It's a very good start for this uh, course. Thank you for watching.